Hello and welcome to my guide for squad leading and hell let loose. This guide will teach you how to play the officer role effectively while also giving you some good tips. If you are new to the channel then hit that subscribe button so you can see the 30 plus guides I've made for hell let loose along with gameplay videos and live streams. So let's get on with it. One of the primary things an officer must do is build outposts for their squad and garrisons for their team. Without these spawn points you are going to lose the game. Outposts let only your squad spawn in them and these can be built with no supplies and they can be built in neutral territory, the first sector of enemy territory and anywhere in your territory. Your squad can also spawn quicker on outposts than garrisons. When attacking you should use your outposts in a forward position to allow your squad to spawn on them and get back into the fight quickly. When defending put these close to the control point that you are defending. Garrisons are spawn points that your entire team can spawn on. These can be built in any friendly territory for 50 supplies and the first sector of enemy territory for 100 supplies. When attacking, these can be used as great points for your team to get back into the fight. Be aware that if you build them in enemy territory, they can be disabled if an enemy is within 100 meters of them. So build them off to the flanks or behind the control point. When building for defense, one garrison is not enough. Your most forward control point needs several garrisons around it. It can be beneficial to have one in the strong point and two behind it. Bear in mind that you cannot build a garrison within 200 meters of another friendly garrison. You can also build a garrison far off to the flank to use as an early warning system for an enemy flank. Because when enemies get close to it, the garrison will ping red. You should also have a garrison built on every point you own as a backup. And let me stress, without garrisons, you are fighting a losing battle. Make sure you build these up, request your support role to drop supplies, get your commander to drop the supplies in, or grab a supply truck and get it forward. Now, while the squad leader doesn't build resource nodes directly, the squad leader should be getting his squad to build them up, especially when on a defensive role. So make sure you get your squad members to build them. It also nets them loads of experience. Now, many squad leaders will tell you the best way to attack a point is from the flanks or the rear. And yes, that's true. But attacking directly does have its place and it is needed. If everyone attacked from the flanks, one squad could just walk straight to the next point with no issues. If you want to be a straight on attacking squad, then be prepared for a huge fight. I would recommend taking up a position in between the two active control points and defending that area or slowly advance sweeping for enemy spawn points. When attacking from the flanks, your priority is to get a garrison up in enemy territory. However, to do this, you need 100 supplies. You can either get this by driving a supply truck, getting a supply drop from the commander or from your support. Bear in mind that if you use the truck or a supply drop, your position will more than likely be compromised as they will be easily spotted by the enemy. The best way to get supplies is for your support role to drop them, then have them redeploy along with someone else in your squad so they can swap roles. The new support role can then spawn in and drop the supplies giving you the 100 that you need. Just make sure you have an outpost down first so your squad can spawn on it. Don't be afraid to do a wide flank. It may take quite a bit of time to pull this off, but if you can manage this, then you will be able to get into a great position for a sneaky garrison. You could also try this flank just by yourself while leaving your squad to help another attacking squad. This focused attack could take all the attention away from your sneaky wide flank. When assaulting the enemy point, only use your smoke grenades if the enemy knows where you are as these will give away your position. Flank round to the back of the control point and look for the garrisons and outposts. Remember that your anti-tank can take these out from a distance with a well-placed rocket. That is your priority, not necessarily to take the strong point, but to hunt down and take out their spawn points. Without them, then taking the point will be easy. I would recommend for new players to the officer role to default themselves to defending their team's most forward control point. Now, why do you ask? Because pretty much all squads go on the attack and leave the control point abandoned so that enemy can easily flank and take it. 
stay back and defend, or at least communicate with the other squads to work out who is defending. When defending, your best asset is an early warning system to enemy movements. For this, you just need to build an extra garrison in the sector. You should always have at least one backup garrison behind the point, but think about putting another one far off to the flank. If that garrison goes hot, then you know the enemy is coming at you from that direction, so get prepared for their assault. One mistake that defenders make is to only defend the strong point, which is this hashed circle. Do not do this. You need to defend the four squares where the point is in, but no, you actually need to defend the entire sector the point is in. When you see the enemy pushing your position from a certain direction, don't just sit in the strong point and defend. You need to push out and take out their spawn points. That is how you defend in Hell Let Loose. Stop the enemy from spawning in. If you don't take up their spawns, they will overrun you. You can split up your squad, you know, leave some men behind at the strong point, while the rest push out to take out their spawns. While defending, keep an eye out for enemy drops. These are supply drops and airheads. If you see a supply drop, then a garrison is more than likely going to be built there. Report it into command, push forward to take out that position. If you see an airhead, then again, push forward and take it out as that airhead will quickly turn into multiple outposts and a garrison. In your squad, certain roles should always be filled. In my opinion, these are a support, anti-tank and automatic rifleman. Now, why is that? Support, you need the supplies. You need garrisons, fortifications and nodes. Now, this role can be rotated in and out as needed, but I like to have a support constantly. An anti-tank, well, it destroys tanks. Also, it can take out enemy garrisons and outposts from a distance with their rockets. Extremely useful. Automatic Rifleman. The firepower this role brings is unmatched, especially for the Axis. The STG-44 and the BAR are so damn good you will want one with you. Arguments can also be made for the Engineer as they build nodes which are needed, but this role can just be rotated in and out as and when you need it. In your squad, you want to make sure that everyone is working with you and sticking to your objectives. If you are defending and one or more of your guys are off attacking, you are at a severe disadvantage. If they will not come back and defend, don't be afraid to kick them from your squad. I don't like booting people from my squad, but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. Not everyone in your squad needs a microphone. As long as they are communicating with text, then it's okay. Some people just don't have mics or are just not comfortable with speaking online. When you spot enemy movements and spawn points, make sure you mark them. This will let your entire team know the situation. Get used to this marker wheel. This section here is for reporting the enemy. These ones are to request things from the commander. And lastly, these ones are orders for your squad or to let the team know where to build spawns. It can be useful to jump into an empty server and have a bit of practice with this wheel. Communication is key in Hell Let Loose, especially as the officer. However, it is a bit more difficult as now instead of just your squad, you're now speaking to the commander and the other squad leaders. This can at times be hectic and confusing. You will miss things that your squad says, so just ask them again to say it. When they spot enemy movements, use your markers to let your team know where you've spotted movement. Make sure you let your squad know what your plan is for the game and what's going on. When it comes to talking in command chat, keep it short and sweet. Do not use command chat to have a huge conversation as this will just drown out all the audio from your squad. Try to only use this chat for urgent communication such as a flanking force on a defensive point or a tank coming up. You can also use this to coordinate with other squads, but as before, keep it short and sweet. And lastly, new players. As a squad leader in this game, you are going to get new players into your squad. Don't just boot them because they're new players. Educate them, lead them into battle. That is part of your role as a squad leader. Don't mock them for games they've played in the past. Like A lot of these players may come from like Battlefield or Call of Duty. Just let them know the mechanics of the game, help them when they ask for it, 
and help them become a better player in Hell Let Loose. And that's it for this squad leading guide for Hell Let Loose. I hope this video has helped you out, and if it has, please give it a like and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next one.